fussing. I don't never make excuses for nothing. I ain't with the bickering, the arguing, or the fussing. I ain't politicking with you while I give me this money, but we can have a conversation over tea and some honey. I'm a real woman, baby, never get it confused. People seeing how I work and now they want to improve. That's the type of stuff to get me in a fabulous mood. You could be hating on me, I'm gonna be happy for you. I'm just trying to keep up with the blessings I'm acquiring. Old supervisor calling, asking if I'm hiring. Way you're looking at me, I could tell what you desiring. You want a piece of me, you gotta follow some requirements, yeah. <laughs> I have always had a deep love for music. I would listen to it in the morning, on the way to school, at lunch. I would have listened to it at dinner, but my dad used to tell me, this is family time. <laughs> I would search the lyrics to my favorite songs, just so I wouldn't miss a beat when singing along. My mom would yell from the other room, you better know that homework as well as you know that song. <laughs> she would drive me crazy. <laughs> Luckily for the both of us, I was blessed to graduate with a BA in Media Studies from UC Berkeley this past May. Well, my degree in education is an important part of the story I'm about to tell you. I was raised in Inglewood, California, which is a small city in Los Angeles. Palm trees and beautiful beaches, my hometown is an amazing place and had a tremendous impact on the person I am today. And I think I'm doing all right. <laughs> Not realizing it at the time, every day in my neighborhood prepared me for life in the outside world as we were expected to abide by a certain code of conduct. What subjects to discuss in public and which were off limits. What you were expected to know and what questions not to ask. The most important info in the code of conduct was how you should and should not behave, especially for women and girls. Like any teenager, conversations of sexual activity would happen from time to time who was doing it, who did what to whom, right? But terms like consent or assault were rarely used. I hadn't learned the full scope of these words until later on in my life, and I'm not alone. In 2017, Planned Parenthood surveyed 2,012 people on consent and sexual assault. Less than a third of the people who responded to this nationally representative survey said they were taught anything at all related to these topics in grade school. With extracurricular education under-resourced at my high school, I was never able to experience any form of sexual education courses. My older siblings and cousins often whispered key lessons to me about how to be safe in navigating through the world as a female person, right? But not exactly how to understand my circumstances in this body while still being free to own and express my sexuality. It always felt like such a taboo topic of discussion, but was affecting so many of my peers, especially in terms of the sexual trauma that the girls were facing within their homes, in schools, in the streets, and beyond. Like most, I use music as my way of healing, coping, and connecting. I spent more time with my iPod than I did my peers and parents combined. Like any teenager, conversations of sexual activity would happen, but not in terms of my sexual agency, my emotional health, or physical agency. My psyche was disturbed by this reality, but I had no real words to describe what I was feeling. Upon moving from Inglewood to the Bay Area to attend college, I became exposed to an entire different scope of understanding about the role of music in my life. The radical dialogue in classes like Fem Sex and Women in Media helped me to put the pieces together for myself. According to a 2017 report by Nielsen Music, on average, Americans spend just over 32 hours a week listening to music. That same year, 93% of the top Billboard hits were about, that's right, you guessed it, sex. USC School of Annenberg conducted a research on inclusion in the music industry. Their report examined the gender of artists across 600 popular songs on the Billboard Hot 100 year-end charts. In the last year, only 16.8% of all performers were women. 
So if 93% of the top Billboard hits are about sex, and women make up less than 20% of the popular music we consume, it is fact that the music industry has been saturated by male-centered narratives and opinions about sex. And with 32 hours of our week spent on consuming these narratives and opinions, how do we think that music can affect our overall social consciousness? What role can it have in the identity formation of young people? How can music work to blur the lines between what consent and assault look like if there are few women speaking on their experiences in popular music? While some music has been criticized for its objectification of women, I believe that a lack of female representation in the industry can be just as harmful. As these uncontested ideas from male artists are left to fester in our minds long after the music has concluded. Suddenly, I found myself exposed to just how much of my own life had been shaped by tortuous lessons on how to survive, how to shield my sexuality from the male gaze, how to shrink my femininity to avoid sexual violence. The lessons would come from so many different entities, but the male voices in the music I was listening to were communicating some starkly opposite ideas. Their sexuality was a source of empowerment for them. Their masculinity seemed to be a symbol of strength. They spoke so freely about their desires, experiences, and expectations of women that I began to long for some opposing perspectives. I wanted to hear women exude the same confidence as my male faves, music that made me proud and comfortable with the power of my womanhood. Society is currently in a women in music renaissance, if you will. Women reclaiming space in the music industry has led to a global conversation and critique of us centering our sexuality in the music we create. They're like, why do women talk about sex in their music, you know? <laughs> well, I use the phrase reclamation of sexuality because male artists have always centered women in their music. Our beauty, our bodies, our entire being has been one of the main sources of inspiration for society's mainstream music since the beginning of time. Critics have seemed relatively comfortable with the hypersexualization of women by male artists, but are discontent with us reclaiming that energy for ourselves and rechanneling it toward the empowerment of women and girls. Rechanneling it toward the empowerment of all women and all girls. I can attest that once I became more intentional about the music I consumed, there was an evolution of my internal and external voice. The dialogue I had with myself and others was no longer dictated by that code of conduct my womanhood seemed to attribute to me. With music working to shape the ideas and behaviors of society, the woman's reclamation of space in the music industry has the power to expose a desensitized world to the realities of our experience in a female body. Through my own music, I have witnessed firsthand the impact that we can have. So, I encourage all women to keep on creating. Keep articulating your life lessons and experiences through music so that others are inspired to do the same while I also encourage music executives to make space for women within their record labels as both talent and staff, I encourage women to create those spaces for themselves. Artists are now leveraging technology and social media platforms to chart our own rules, no longer reliant on major labels to get us to the top. In broadening the scope of musical dialogue to include female human narratives, we flip the script and are able to illustrate our own opinions about love, consent, happiness, pleasure, and pain. This way, our strength and agency is directly embedded into the culture and influences a perpetual balance of representation in the music industry. Music is a direct segue into the minds and lives of all people. 
It starts organic conversations that do not always require an academic lens to codify. By openly proclaiming our sexuality as ours, we affirm the millions of women who are impacted by society's normalization of female degradation. We are inspiring women to unapologetically explore and empower themselves. By doing so, we hold the key to our own liberation, now and forever. Thank you.